Hello viewers, this is Hey Rotlinia. Welcome back to my playthrough of Dragon Quest V, Hand of the Heavenly Bride, for the Nintendo DS. Previously, we made our way here to Helmanoptra, and met with Queen Cleohatra. Apparently, Madison's father was King Pancras, from the Kingdom of Gotha, far to the east. That's where the Queen has told us to go next. First, we're going to see if we can find one of those desert roses we've heard about. We'll start by resting at the Helmanoptra Inn here. A yeah, hot honeymoon. I'm starting to get used to this man and wife lark. I hope we can keep on traveling together like this for a long while. You know, I really like chatting with you, Madison. I had no idea how talkative I could be until you and I got together. I want to go to Gotha. We can go, right, Madison? Oh, you bet. I feel like I might find something new out about you if we go there, see? And here we find a desert rose. Madison examines the ground at his feet. What luck! A desert rose! And that goes into the bag. This item is actually a knick-knack. A sandy bloom that blossoms in the desert. Now if you remember, someone back in Stock and Barrel wants one of these. So we'll go back to Stock and Barrel by way of Mostro Ferrado. Fix up our lineup and we'll be on our way. Some drooling ghouls appear, eh? Oh, Balmron! Madison! Blasted drooling ghouls! And, Mick Heel has reached level 18. Good job, Heel Slime. Mick Heel the Heel Slime is now at level 18. Now we're in Stock and Barrel and we'll go down the first well. Hey, that's a desert rose you've got there. Wow, I've been after one of those for ages. I don't suppose I could have yours? Yes, you could. Blimey, thanks a lot, mate. Here, I'll give you some of the world-renowned scintillating center in return. And we have gotten some scintillating center. Another knick-knack. Huh. No wonder it's been so lucky. No wonder it's been so tricky finding any scintillating center lately. That bloke's got it all. Balmy bath salts from Stock and Barrel. Yep, there's nothing prettier than a desert rose. It's all the better now because it gives you a taste of the outside world, holding something so exotic. If he's that fussed about the outside world, then why don't he get out of this well? Truly, maybe that's why he was after the scintillating center all the while. <laughs> 
now for another rest. It's a little less expensive here than in Helmanoptera. Now we'll zoom back to Helmanoptera and see if we can find another Desert Rose. Ah, there we go. Another Desert Rose. Now let's take these things back to the Nictactatory. He's a proper fine builder in the years, ain't he? I wonder if he came from a long way away. Hopefully it won't be long before we dazzle folk with our exhibits, as well as just the building itself. Well, let's bring on the night time. And we'll go place a couple more knickknacks. Let us, let us exhibit the Desert Rose here. Stone from Helenoptron Desert in shape of rose. Popular trinket among travelers. And here we'll put to that scintillating center. Bath salts from Stock and Barrel Spa. Instantly, re instantly relieve tension and stress. It's a bit scary being in a museum of a night, but it's got a special sort of feel to it too. Well now, let's rest it until morning. Thank you. Sue, Sue Veneer. I'm absolutely crazy about knickknacks, you know. It's sort of in me blood, I suppose. Sue Veneer, huh? So it's grand altogether that old Mr. Knack's given me the chance to work here like this. He won't regret it. Mr. Knack's written me a little note about the sort of exhibits he's hoping to see in the museum. According to what he's written, there's a sort of rating that goes with every article. I think Mr. Nack's expecting the articles on display on the second and third levels to reflect the grandeur of their setting to some extent. Anyway, if you'd like to look at what he's written any time, just give me a nod. I suppose we'd better have a look at that note next time we're thinking of exhibiting something. Would you like to see Mr. Knack's note now, Madison? There are notes on various things here, including a few things we don't have just yet. The Slime Curio and Forget-Me-Not Flag, Lofty Lilts, and some question marks. It's good to see so many visitors in the place. We've a fair few visitors now, so I'm after finding myself a receptionist, you know. It's good that we're getting more and more customers, eh? It was always nice to see lots of customers back when we were in the inn, too. This place don't feel like a museum at the minute. There's something funny in the air. The place don't... The place doesn't feel so creepy now there are actually a few exhibits on display, don't you think? We should put even more things on display if we want to keep the customers happy, eh? 
It's nice and tidy, considering it was off the beaten track all that time. The old man must have taken care of the place. You can start to imagine what people's lives in different places are like when you look at these exhibits, can't you? It's really quite fascinating. Seeing all these things on display reminds me of all the places we visited. All sorts of interesting stuff. Apparently, all these articles were collected by the curator himself. Personally, he must be quite a man, eh? You'd better believe it, sir. He certainly is quite a man. It's a bit embarrassing being praised like that, though, eh? It's a pedestal. Suddenly, an eerie voice appears from nowhere. Now, don't ye be polishing the exhibits or changing anything around while we visitors in the place. I told you to do that at night, so I did. Yep, we'll get fussed by... We'll get fussed at by old man Nick Knack. There's only one spot to put something on display in here. It'll have to be something really special. The rarer the exhibits in a museum, the more visitors it attracts. La la la, and I say to myself, what a wonderful knick-knackatory! The rarer the exhibits, I reckon the stuff on display up here is quite a bit rarer than what's downstairs, eh? Of course, the grandest exhibit of all won't come until post-game. Well, that's enough of the knick-knackatory for now. Let's see what monsters roam around here. Fill out our bestiary a little bit. A dragoon, hoodlums, and terraceratops. Tortoceratops. Ouch. Watch out, Bianca. Heal up the wifey a bit. Don't dodge. Stupid dragoon. Ah, critical hit. Good job, hero. Goodbye, enemies. Now you can get a really good enemy around here. This is not it. Uh, can't suck magic out of a hoodlum, eh? All right. Another silly hoodlum. A Dragoon and a Jowler. Trying to blind us, are you? It didn't work. So long, enemies.
Dragoons, a Jowler, and a Hoodlum. Hmm, the Dragoons can be put to sleep. That's helpful. So long, enemies. And Balmron, our great saber cat, reaches level 21. And Balmron learns War Cry. Bianca reaches level 20. Some nice boosts there. And she learns Frizzle. So, Brom Balmron is now at level 21. With War Cry which can stun some enemies. And Bianca the Wife is at level 20. Some Tortoceratops appear. Goodbye. And Gutrude the Slime reaches level 23. Congratulations, Gutrude the Slime. Here we go, a liquid metal slime. Let's swap in some folks with liquid... M I mean, with Falcon Knife earrings equipped. That's right, don't run away. Ah, nice job, Gudeon. Over 10,000 experience points. Madison reaches level 23. Gudian reaches level 22. Mikheel reaches level 19. Bianca reaches level 21. Sloth reaches level 18. Sloth reaches level 19. Nice work, team. So, Madison is now at level 23. Gudian is now at level 22. 
Mikiel is now at level 19. Bianca is now at level 21. Sloth is now at level 19. And that's it, I think. Yeah, I checked you earlier, Bomb Run. And I think we checked you too, Gutrude. Now let's go see what other new enemies we can find. Mermen, Crossbones, and a Thaumatosaurus. That war cry is pretty nice. And it's free. Goodbye, mermen. And Gutrude reaches level 24. Congrats, Gooty. And thank you, McKeel. Mermen and Thaumatosauri. Some umph. Goodbye, enemies. Now, we won't be able to explore that central continent. Not until the third part of the game. Might as well fill in around the edges, though. While we're getting some sea enemies in the monster book. Crossbones and a man of war. So long, enemies. Those men of war are. Ah, oh, that one wants to join the party. They're pretty weak, but they can paralyze us. This man of war is Megusa. Float on off to the monster garden, Megusa.
Also, we won't be able to explore much of the northeastern part of that southwest continent. Southern Zephyrus. The access to the river is blocked off by those shoals. And there are also mountains in the way. Some mermen appear. Goodbye, mermen. Uh, this is the area of that Mount Magmageddon volcano. Also, there are shoals everywhere, pro prohibiting access to the outer ocean. Some thaumatosauri appear. So, while we have us a ship, we can't go just everywhere in the world yet. Ah, Madison! Goodbye, enemies! And Balmerin is now at level 22! Congratulations there, Balmerun. So, we've been to Helmanoptra, we have been to Dominicus's Dominion, a Mana War, and a Crossbones. The next major landmass to explore will be the southeastern one. More shoals there. Some mermen appear. Goodbye, mermen. Thaumatosaurai, a merman, and a man of war. We can't have that, Thaumatosaurus. So long, enemies! We're now in the vicinity of Above It All Tower, to our east there. Then there's Heavens Above Abbey. I think we'll get off here.
and have a rest, a free rest for the night. No, we don't mind the cramped visitors' lodgings. And we'll save here. In the next episode, we'll continue seeking monsters to get into our monster book. And we may also head to the first place on the southeastern continent. This is Heyerotlinio. I would like to thank you for watching, and I will see you again next time.